Welcome to the Special Lecture Series in Computer Science. Uh, it's nice to have a large room full for John. When John spoke before, it was a very dynamic talk. One thing we want to be careful with John is to give him enough time. So I present John Rayboy at rayboy.com, a former student and a great speaker. Welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome. I am a computer scientist. I graduated in 96. I have a lot to say. I'm going to go real fast. I have 50 slides. Who knows what's going to happen? It'll be fun. I graduated, uh, like it says here, in 96 with a bachelor's in CS and, uh, and uh, Japanese. I've had an interesting life. Okay? That's one of the things that makes me so, as Pro Professor Wells says, dynamic. Uh, I'm an MC. I've done stand-up comedy. I'm a kung fu master certified photojournalist, uh, entrepreneur. I had a consulting firm for 10 years. I've worked at a number of huge places. Uh, people pay me to make things for that, and that's kind of generally my, my shtick. Uh, I started out, my first job after USF was Apple. And if you plot it on a curve, I was at the innate year of the stock price. Uh, so kind of, I've been at highs and lows. Apple, currently at Yahoo Local. So I'm at Yahoo down Sunnyvale, and some of my Yahoo colleagues are here, looking sad. Uh, don't believe everything you read in the paper, Yahoo's still a fantastic place to work. And these are some of my other clients, people who have paid me to make things for them. All right, let me just talk a little bit about the bell curve. Everything gathers in the middle. You should know this. This is the most useful concept of all of mathematics for a computer scientist, or at least for me. Everything gathers at the middle, right? Everything normally distributed gravitates toward the mean. Okay? You can see in Six Sigma covers 99.73% of everything. Everybody's kind of distributed along the curve. If you're at the right of the curve, you're extraordinarily you know, high. If you're at the left of the curve, you're extraordinarily low. So when, as you graduate here and go out with your CS degree, you'll notice that some really smart people are around you. And some really stupid people are above you. You just can't. And also money, they're not connected. Money is not commensurate with IQ. That's the first thing you need to put out of your minds. The people above you, people telling you what to do, people giving you requirements, might be just barely able to keep their autonomic nervous system moving. They're just so stupid. But you have to work for that. So there's no connection between money and IQ. And thus I give you me. All right, this might sound a little bit bragging. I have a high IQ. Whatever IQ is, we're not sure what it measures, IQ. We're not sure. But it measures something, right? I'm not going to say I'm smarter than any of you, but according to some tests, I've got a very high IQ. However, the higher the IQ, the more you see the mistakes that you make. Okay, so the smarter you are, kind of the unhappier you are. So, but it gives you perspective, and that's what I bring to you today. Here we go. Here's the problem. Here's the problem statement. Here's what you need to think about as you receive your training here. I did some math the other day. I'm thinking, I'm the top 1% of IQ. There's 7 billion people in the world. 7 billion people in the world. That means there's 70 million of me. Okay, let's just split it up. About 35 million of them are men. Uh, you know, according to the standard distribution, uh, about 24 million, about the same age. And about 12 million of those graduate from college. And according to this graph from uh, 2007, you know, first world countries, about 25% of people graduate with a science degree of some sort. That means there are 3 million exact copies of me in the world. 3 million of me. And I thought I was pretty smart. And so if you'll see here, here's the, the overall problem. China has, and India both have way more engineers than we have in America. We have great schools in America, great teachers in America, great technology, great uh, software firms. But we are outnumbered 10 to 1, at least. I live in China, and some of the, the scale of restaurants in China is overwhelming. My wife has a restaurant, uh, she ran a restaurant in Fatsang, it's in the, in the south of China. And uh, I was like, this place is huge, 69 private rooms and a large, huge banquet hall. And I said, well, how many, this is crazy huge. She's like, no, this is a small restaurant, only 250 employees. <laughs> they had a dormitory for the cooking staff. And the, 
the kitchen, you could throw, well, me and we could throw a football from one end to the other. In the kitchen, there are restaurants there that are the size of stadia, stadiums. I'm sort of dead serious. There's one restaurant, a uh, small aside, uh, Christmas Day a year ago, we walked from the, we, there was 100 people waiting. I said, we're never going to sit down, 100 people. We sat down like five minutes. We walked, not kidding, 20 minutes from the front door to our table. <laughs> 20 minutes. And, and we were like, this is ridiculous. The place is so big, and I, I shit you not, uh, my coworkers will attest, the placemat was a map. <laughs> not kidding, I have it. I'll upload it on you. The placemat of the restaurant is a map. It says, oh, you know, American food is that way, and take your guide with you, and he'll lead you through the mountains. This is a <laughs> scale of people over there, engineers, just like you, is overwhelming. Absolutely incredible. Three million copies of me, about this age, working in the workforce, high IQ, with a math or science degree, and they work for pennies. Here's the problem statement uh, put another way. There are a few of us. And by the way, it doesn't matter where you're from. As of right now, you are an American engineer. That's part of what I'm talking about. You're an engi engineer educated here. You're one of us. I don't care where you're from, what your first, second, through fifth languages are. You are an American engineer. There are a few of us, and many times many factorial of them. It's a very huge number. We're expensive, they're cheap. We're entitled. You know, we've grown up thinking that we're all going to be rock stars and movie gods. They're downtrodden, struggling just for anything. We're lazy, they got 10 jobs, they night fight for supper, yada, yada. And there's the fact, one of us equals three of them, salary-wise. So big companies now are moving jobs overseas, happily. We got one guy here at top 1% of IQ, he knows JavaScript really well. I got three guys in Bangalore. But, okay, when this guy chooses, we won't fire him, but when he chooses to retire, when we annoy him enough, he'll quit, and then we'll hire three people in Bangalore, we'll still save money. Stockholders will be happy and the CEO will get another bonus. In other words, this is what we're facing. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, this is the funniest thing I've ever done. All right, so this is us and that's them. That's the way you got to look at it. They're badass. <laughs> that makes me laugh. Uh, there's another way to look at it. Uh, this is me, by the way, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, and no, that's the same aspect ratio <laughs> originally shot in. This is what computer science did to me, by the way. This is what startups did to me, by the way, right there. Uh, that looks better on the flat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, better, air quotes. All right. Yeah, it's, that's awful. Uh, okay, so we're outnumbered. They're just like us. They're just as smart. They're hungrier. How do we win? We're not going to win on numbers. You can't just be just as good as someone else. I'm going to give you the lesson of trivia right here. The lesson of trivia is, uh, I play trivia down at Pig and Whistle Sunday nights, uh, rarely lose, uh, it's a very fun time. But here's the problem. Uh, when you're tied with another team, or everybody else is tied, and you're, you're losing, you've got this flock over here that you're trying to beat, and you're, you're down. And some question comes along, and you're, you're thinking, uh, you know, who's the top selling artist, a uh, female artist of all time, and you're thinking, everyone is going to guess Madonna. Everyone's going to guess Madonna. So do we guess Madonna and not lose ground? Or do we guess Mariah Carey, maybe, or Lady Gaga? Just like, a, just take a long three-point shot, just in case. Because if you're right, if you're all right, then you all go together and you're still behind. But if they're wrong and you're right, you make up ground. Sometimes you have to go for it. Here are some other people. So these are historical <laughs> figures uh, who have succeeded with a small group attacking a large overdog, underdogs, in other words. Outnumbered but not outgunned. The way to win when you're outnumbered and they're just like you is you have to be awesome. Here's another awesome anecdote. I didn't think I was going to say this. Um, uh, I grew up in Alaska, which is a very rough and tumble place in the north, uh, basically a foreign country. It's kind of like Texas, but colder. Um, we, uh, yeah, feel free to laugh. Thank you. I, I, I hate that guy. So, one time my dad was unloading his truck, and he was between a truck and a, a, his shop. As he's walking back to his truck, he looks up. He's surrounded by wolves. Because the nearest neighbor west of us is Russian and speaks Russian. It's like a thousand miles of nothingness to the west of us. 
we're on the edge of town, right in the middle of the state, surrounded by wolves. There are like a dozen of them. His dog, a Samoyed, which is a dog, white dog, gentle dog, bred for taking care of children in Siberia hundreds of years ago. Just a gentle, kind dog, part of the family. Jumps out of the car and faces down these wolves one by one. The wolves would advance, and the dog would like stare this, this one off, bare the teeth, oh, I'm not going to do it, the whole thing. And then another one would advance, and the dog would come over here and take him down. And then another one would come, and eventually the wolves gave up, because no one wolf was willing to sacrifice his life to let the group succeed. Right? The dog was awesome. Our dog was awesome, saved my father's life that day. I heard about the story when the dog died. Oh, that's ominous. Okay, so, <laughs> one can defeat many, but you gotta be awesome. Here's how to be awesome, you gotta be different, okay? Everybody's going straight, you're not gonna win on numbers, you have to be perpendicular to everyone. You have to have a toolbox, I'll get through these things, let's, get, let's jump right in. Just think about it, what can you do that three genius Indians can't do? <laughs> and yeah, Detroit people. So, so you need to think about this. What what can you do? What do you bring to the table when a company is, wants to hire you? They can choose between you or three people in, in India. They play chess for fun in Russia. Chess is a spectator sport in Russia and in China. Do you think you're going to just win just by being regular? No, you have to be special. You have to be awesome. You have to cut. No one can see you coming. In the, the Longing system of Kung Fu that I teach, the dragon style, there's an adage. The adage is when the enemy comes straight, you attack from the side. And when they come from the side, you punch them in the face. <laughs> right? You cannot go toe to toe with a big guy. If any of you, I weigh 269 pounds as of yesterday, if any of you were to go toe to toe with me in the ring, you would lose. <laughs> I guarantee you, unless you've got a knife. And, uh, maybe. So, you would lose. You're not going to beat me in a fist fight. But if you fight dirty, you just find a way. I sponsor a uh, senior team and master's class projects here all the time at Professor Buckwalter's auspices. And I've learned a few things. I'm not going to point out individuals here. Some of the projects have been great. Uh, many of them have not. Uh, the reason is not that you're stupid, stupid. Uh, it's that you're young and you don't know. So. Take what I've said and practice. The number one thing you gotta do is you gotta have a toolbox. You have to have tools that you know well and that you use all the time and that you can quickly deploy. Because speed, you have to be faster than everyone else and you have to have a toolbox. I mean, what? Someone's gonna give you a project. Uh, I'll, I'll give you $10,000. Just, just help me build this system and I'm gonna demo it to Morgan Stanley next week. I need to have a demo up in 10 days. What would you do if I give you that project right now? How, how quickly could you turn around the prototype? If the answer is more than a day or two, you got a problem. You need better tools. You have to have a favorite GUI, favorite uh, IDE, right? Favorite text editor. You have to have a quick stack that you can deploy. For me, this is uh, HTML and JavaScript, uh, Node.js on the server, and some kind of schema-less storage like Redis or CouchDB or MongoDB, et cetera. I can deploy that in minutes right now. I can even probably do it with one hand while I'm giving the rest of the speech. And I know Tim has probably already done it in the content of this paragraph. <laughs> How quickly can you have a prototype up? That's number one. You've got to answer that question for yourself. You've got to be faster. Process doesn't matter at all. You're going to be, you're going to be told by some people, some clients are going to expect you, oh, I want to send you some requirements, you send me a specifications document, ignore all that. You can do a spec document if you want, but a real client doesn't care. No one cares that you wrote a great document if your software doesn't work. Nobody cares if you talked a great game, but when it came time to deliver the product, sorry, we're late. And here's the, here's the advantage that American engineers have over Indian and Chinese engineers. 